Hello beautiful, welcome to my space. Today we are doing a beginner friendly makeup tutorial. First thing is you want your brows to look sharp so using a brow blade just go over the edges of your brows like I am doing. Use a mirror please and uh, take off any of the stray hairs or flyaway hairs that you don't want to see. And then I'll clean my entire face with micellar water. I'm using the L'Oreal Age Perfect Micellar Water. This takes care of any excess oils that might be on your face, giving you a clean canvas to work on. Using the Prodigy Emerald Collection makeup brushes. Guys, these brushes are so beautiful. You've got 14 pieces to create whatever look you want to create. And the brushes themselves are beautiful very user friendly i'm using the spoolie brush and just um brushing up my brows so i'm um, getting them ready to be lined i'll be using two pencils a very dark shade and a lighter and um, dark shade what i'll do with the using the very dark shade these are the rimmel and um, brow pencils I am using that to outline my brows fully underneath and on top of my brows I'll skip about a centimeter and a half um, just so I can have a good ombre effect when I'm brushing on the when I'm brushing up the brows so what is you don't want you don't want you don't want that harshness uh, um, on your brows so you, you always have to leave about a centimeter before you line the top bit of the brows and then I'm just filling in the um, mid part with the lighter shade of the brow pencil both brow pencils are from Rimmel and then using the spoolie brush I'm just um, brushing them in together this helps and um, blend in the the different shades of the brown And then I'm using the um, Elegal Pro in phone to outline my brows. What I did here was, um, well, if you're beginning, you want to find a very good um, angled brush or a flat tip brush. This helps you to um, lay on your concealer um, precisely just underneath where you've lined your brows and then push that down so that it's easy for you to blend blend when you're blending I think I took so much time while I was blending which you'd see in the future in <laughs> which you'll see um, in some minutes time but you want to if you're working with this concealer you want to blend as 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 soon as possible just so it doesn't dry on you and so I used the leftover concealer and just put it all over my lid this creates like a canvas and also serves as a, a an eyeshadow primer and then using the wow blender this blender guys is so beautiful it's also from prodigy I just use the blender to blend out my blend out the concealer and I used a fluffy brush to buff the concealer I'm using a darker concealer at the start of the brows to just blend that into the um, fun concealer I use just so you don't have that harsh very bright start at the start of your brows guys it doesn't look nice and this helps to blend out your nose contour when you're doing nose contour as well and I'm just using that fluffy brush to buff it in and then using the Jaclyn Hill palette um, I'll be doing my um, eyeshadows with that. I'll leave all the shades that I used beneath and then and then I'm just going over my brow bone with a light brow bone color it's a matte shade you always want to use a matte shade for your brow bone and then for my transition I'm using a I'm also using a matte shadow for my transition color. Um, 
this is really a personal preference and it has to do with the look you're trying to create um, you can blend the colors that you think would suit your look um, these were the colors that I thought were appropriate for the look I was going for but the key thing is that you always want to use a matte shadow for both your brow bone area and your transition area and then I just decided to smoke out the outer corners of my eyes with a darker brown shade and if you see what I'm doing I'm intentionally um, creating like a V with the brush I used and then blending it inwards intentionally blending it into the transition shade just guys it's really all about the blend you can blend this and get whatever effect you want even as it is if you want to add a black shadow that's fine you know it to further intensify the smokiness of it but i thought that that was okay and then i used a precise blending brush to just put more intensity on the crease color And then using a C shader, this brush is perfect for packing on colors on the lid because it's not so large. It's and it has a perfect shape to 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 go into. So I'm just putting on a shimmer color for the lid color. And what I did, I think I used two colors on here, so a darker bronzy shade, and I went over with with a dark champagne shade. I'll leave all the names of the shades beneath. I hope you can just watch and see what I what I did and I do apologize <laughs> filming a makeup video is not as easy as I thought I was I was busy looking at the mirror when I should be more concerned with where the camera is facing So using a Kiko pencil, a Kiko gel liner pencil and a Rimmel liquid liner, I'm just going to line my eyes. My eyes are quite sensitive so I always try as much as possible <laughs> to do very minimal lining and that's why I, I, what I do is I use the gel pencil first and then I'll go over with the Rimmel um, liquid pens, liquid liner, and I just use the liquid liner at the inner corner and outer corner of my eyelids. Nothing in the mid part because I knew that I was going to put on lashes, so the lashes will cover that. And then going over with the L'Oreal Infallible Primer, guys, L'Oreal ticks all the boxes for accessibility, affordability and quality. Quality guys, this primer is so beautiful. And then going over with the primer, I'll be spraying the L'Oreal Infallible Setting Spray. These two together gives your canvas a perfect, a perfect sweat proof smudge proof surface for layering on your foundation i'm using the l'oreal true match foundation in shades i think it was cocoa and deep cool these foundations are so beautiful and they've got skin friendly properties as well so they are very beautiful for the skin the quality comes out well what i'm doing is i'm just using an angled brush to outline the top of my brows i usually love outlining my brows with the foundation shade i'm using you can also do this with a concealer a darker shade of concealer or a shade of concealer that matches or closely matches your skin tone i do this most times first before 
putting on the foundation all around just so I don't put the foundation over the brows because brows is a lot of work guys so I'm just um, using uh, I'm using a foundation brush uh, from the brush set and I'm layering on just a layer of the foundation and what I did with the foundation is I mixed two shades I took two two pumps of the lighter shade and one pump of the darker shade and I think in this case the darker shade is cocoa and the lighter shade is deep cool and then I went ahead to use the wow blender my blender is damp so this guarantees that it doesn't move your makeup I use the damp blender to just um, blend out the foundation more and what I'm doing just now is using a tinted brow gel over my brows this would this would just give you know the color is so nice when it dries down it sets the brows and it fills out any sparse or spaces um, that might have been while I was trying to fill it in with a pencil And then I'm just using a spoolie to brush out the brows and just blending the color of the brow gel with the um, pencils. And then I am using the L'Oreal Infallible. It's L'Oreal everything, guys, on the face. I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer. I think the shade was... Um, I'm sorry I've forgotten guys I'll put the shade down below it's either honey or something close to that but I'm using the I'm just taking one duffer applicator per side of my cheek and that just spreads out in the three lines you've seen and I put a little in the corner and I'm using the same blender to blend out the concealer and what I'm doing is if you notice it's just emotion the 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 it's just the the way the motion in which you blend i'm blending outwards and i'm blending inwards diagonally just so i can have some concealer come down to my to my cupid's area i just thought it's it, it looks better for me personally it's a personal thing if you're going for a full-on full full coverage serious beats then yes you can add more concealer on the cupids but if not i mean the concealer you have on your um on your blender should be enough to just highlight the cupids area i went ahead to put a streak of concealer on my nose and then some dots on my forehead and it's just blend 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 and then using the blender i try to blend out the harsh lines just so it, it there's a seamless blend between the concealer and the foundation and then i'm setting that with the sasha buttercup and the thing with the sasha is it just um, because it's yellow tone so the yellow tone is going to kind of brighten further brighten <laughs> my under eyes um you can always use a translucent powder if you don't want but i just wanted that yellow tone to it and i'm putting the powder i'm using a contour brush just like i'm not taking so much of the powder what i did was when i dip the brush in the powder i tap off the excesses i tap off the excesses and i'm putting that on the nose on the forehead and under where all the light concealing went on and then I'm using the L'Oreal True Match Concealer. Um, I'll leave all the shades beneath. And that is what I used to contour my nose. And I put a streak to the sides of my cheek for my cheek contour. Because this look wasn't supposed to be a very chiseled look. Even though <laughs> I, think, I think the nose contour was... Maybe I put a bit too much and I mean it's okay, but I didn't really want that so much definition But I ended up <laughs> I ended up having a lot of definition on my nose So but you just need a dark concealer Or if you're light skin 
or you have um, very dark shades of powder flying or if you're light skin you can use a very dark powder to powder conceal which I think is really nice because then you don't get all the you don't there's not a lot of work in blending out the harsh lines you know it just um, contours seamlessly into the lighter side of the concealing but thank god for blenders So if you see, I didn't apply um, conceal concealers to my temples. I'm just using any excess on the blender to blend upwards to my temple. And then I'm using the True Match L'Oreal True Match blendable powders. These powders are so beautiful. Everything L'Oreal on the face. I'm going to leave the powder shades beneath, and I think I used two shades of. Um, I used two shades. Not I think I used. I'm trying to say I, I think the shades I used were cappuccino and something else. I've forgotten, but I'll leave the names beneath. So I'm just using the lighter shade to blend out the um, light concealed areas of my face and I'm going to go over the whole face again with the darker shade of powder and I use the darker shade um, to blend over the nose contours as well. And what I like to do here is I take a bit of the lighter powder as well in a smaller brush and just blend out into blend the edges of my eyeshadow just so it blends seamlessly with the face. And then I used the sleek uh, blush in, in the shade flushed. This blush is so beautiful for light skin tones, beautiful for dark skin tones. And then for highlighting, it's the Master Chrome. Maybelline highlighters are beautiful. Guys, I used two shades. It's the Molten Gold and Citrine. And this like highlighters are really sparkly. So if you want full-on glow, then you can put as much as you want. But I wanted a subtle glow. And that's what I think I got. And using the tip of my pinky finger, I just applied a bit on the on the on the bridge of my nose best applicator is to use a very small tip brush because truly the fingers the fingers has a way of just making the highlighting um much much more if you don't want it so much then it's smaller brush tip is fine for the lips i used a kiko pencil to outline the edges of the lips and then two shades of uh, maybelline ink stain i used the darker shade um, first and then the lighter shade in the mid part of the lips just to create an ombre effect and with this ones you have to wait maybe uh, for about 40 seconds for it to dry a tad bit and then you use a fluffy brush to just buff out the edges of the um, two colors just so they blend seamless and you can get that ombre effect but before I applied any lip product I used a lip balm I used the Kamex lip balm because um, my lips were quite dry so but if the lips are not that's fine you can do but this lip stains has a way of um, feeling very drying on the lips. So you always have, it's best to use like a lip balm before you use any of the um, lip stains. And then 
we spray it spray down um, the face this further seals your makeup and takes off any ashiness and on to the lashes guys lashes are a serious problem for me personally i enjoy putting lashes on clients but on myself it's such a struggle i don't know why that is but um what i did was i just used a, a mascara i think that was the renal mascara um, this is not a waterproof mascara because um, I wasn't going anywhere with the makeup so, but if you're going somewhere and places where you think you might shed some tears waterproof and um, mascaras are best and the lashes were applied <laughs> off camera after like 20 minutes of struggle and then because my eyes are quite sensitive I just used the mascara to um, lightly on the lower lash which I really don't have and <laughs> I I kind of smudged the lower eyes with a black shadow because um, I couldn't line my under eyes and that's it guys um, I think what I further did was just to put some um, blue on the inner corners of the eyes and that is it just a simple makeup look <laughs> or beginner friendly makeup look and you can glam yourself to any occasion thank you guys for watching and do have a beautiful day see you in my next video and please subscribe thank you